Coming up tonight on YCU News, flags fly at half-staff in remembrance of President John F. Kennedy. We learned from last night's discussion between Senate Republicans and Democratic House members whether Medicaid expansion will be accepted. And a federal government study reports that homelessness is on the rise in Vermont. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCU, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region and central Vermont. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that's happening in our area. The news on YCU, your local view. Good evening, and welcome to this Friday edition of YCU News. I'm Rose Spillman. Flags across the nation will fly at half staff today as a day of remembrance for President John F. Kennedy. It has been 50 years since Kennedy's assassination in Dallas, Texas. Most people who were going about their day on November 22, 1963, a Friday, remember where they were when they heard the news of the 46-year-old president's death. Thoughts of what might have been had Kennedy lived to complete his first term linger in many minds. What would Kennedy and his administration have accomplished? Would he have been re-elected? How would the world we see and know today be different? A local college professor shares his thoughts on Kennedy's legacy. New England College professor of history James Walsh explains why questions about John Fitzgerald Kennedy's legacy remain. Thanks, Rose. So I want to talk about the historical significance of, of the assassination. It's the 50th anniversary. Are we still feeling it today? Absolutely. Uh, the Kennedy myth has been begun within hours of his death 50 years ago today. Um, the, the importance of Kennedy based on who he was and, and how uh, his administration spun out had a lot to do with his age, had to do with the fact that he was the youngest man ever elected president, had a lot to do with his wife, the First Lady, Jacqueline Kennedy. Uh, they had created a, 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 an optimism in America that was unparalleled, coming off the, uh, the buildup of the Cold War. And Kennedy's death began a process not only of um, institutionalizing his personality and his wife's personality and his family's personality in American history, but also his legacy. And then when we get to the 90s and the, and the early 2000s, as revisionist historians start to look at his presidency, we get into the other, the, the seedier side of it, the womanizing and the, and the other things. But, and, and that sort of casts a shadow over the greatness of his presidency. And, and will he be remembered for, beside the assassination, what are the legacy of the Kennedy administration? Well, certainly uh, starting our involvement in Vietnam in a meaningful way was the biggest thing. The second thing was the distraction of the civil rights movement uh, to his foreign policy initiatives was really fortuitous because he was able to start something based on his popularity that Lyndon Johnson finished after the assassination, that is the Civil Rights Act and then subsequently the Voting Rights Act. So those, I mean, those elements were huge legacies in, in his career. Absolutely, absolutely. His first year was disastrous. The Bay of Pigs, uh, the uh, other incidents that he got involved in, got us involved in, uh, didn't go well. His meeting with uh, Khrushchev in uh, Austria, terrible, terrible stuff. Ter he was depressed at the end of his first year. But, but the second year turned things around. The second year with the with the 1962 issue with uh, the, the 13 days, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and his successful averting of nuclear disaster, and no one will ever measure how close we were to that, uh, really turned his presidency around, and his initiatives in 63 before his death, confronting George Wallace in Alabama, and taking a stand for civil rights was enormous. The impact carries on today. Well, thank you for taking the time to share this with us. You're welcome. And Rose, back to you. Ceremonies will continue throughout the day to honor Kennedy. President Barack Obama issued a proclamation today in honor of the late president's work. Memories of what did not happen in Concord, New Hampshire are fresh and political. 
a majority of Senate Republicans failed to reach a compromise with Democratic House members on Thursday. Medicaid expansion will not be expanded at this time. Health coverage for 50,000 poor or underemployed New Hampshire residents remains elusive. Governor Maggie Hassan issued a statement minutes after the vote to expand Medicaid failed. She did not mince words. Members of the Senate Republican Caucus let down the people of New Hampshire by refusing to compromise on a health care expansion plan that would work, Hassan said. Money from the federal government would allow this expansion. $2.4 billion in federal funds would cover these costs for the first three years. After the third year, the federal plan would pay for 90 percent of Medicaid expansion. Keeping a healthy workforce is best for the state's economy, agreed members of the state's business and industry association. The BIA endorsed this weak Medicaid expansion. The BIA support led freshman representative Linda Tanner, a Democrat from Senapee, to feel hopeful about the start of Thursday's session. Yet while Tanner voted for Medicaid expansion, she noticed how the whirlwind of activity around her affected the day's vote. Well, yesterday um, I was disappointed, obviously. I really thought that uh, with the Business and Industry Association backing the Medicaid expansion and the Democratic uh, proposal, the Commission proposal actually, it was a bipartisan proposal, that things would have um, come to a compromise at some point. I guess the other thing about yesterday as a freshman uh, legislator was that I think in everybody's freshman year you have that loss of innocence or idealism and yesterday was that day for me. Um, we were in session and at 10 o'clock and told that the Senate would only stay until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. So they had put a time limit, which then offered an opportunity for stalling and disruption. And it really was unbelievable how the day went on with challenges to the chair, repeated challenges to the chair, to the point where about 3, 30, 4 o'clock, there was a limit put on debate so that we could possibly get done by 4 o'clock. Um, but also after lunch, the word came down from the Senate that the Senate bill had been uh, overturned um, by a few Republicans that had gone sided with the Democrats, and so the Senate didn't even have a bill to give us. Our bill passed, everything passed in the House by a good 20 to 30 vote margin. Uh, nothing was even close. but um, it was the delay tactics. Uh, the House was hoping that, if the bill did pass, it would only get to 5 o'clock and then the Senate would leave and it would be a, a done deal that it wouldn't get through. So now we go to January, um, and I'm hoping it comes up again. Governor Hassan said she and Medicaid expansion supporters will continue their work to pass this legislation. Our health care providers are ready. Our businesses are ready. Our people are ready. And I am ready. I hope that at some point, a few Senate Republicans will set ideology aside and step forward to do what is right. Until then, it is the people who are hurt, and it is the people whom Senators must answer to. State Senator Bob O'Dell, a Republican from Limpster, said today he expects the debate to come up again in the new year, but the solution will be to do it in a way that is right for New Hampshire, not Washington. After the break, we will see how shopping locally could save your town and why a federal government study reports that homelessness is increasing in Vermont. The YCU News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCU News. I'm Rose Spillman. Shop locally. The town you save could be your own. It's called the Yellow Card, and new London business owners are hopeful this card will bring plenty of green to their stores. Destination New London is a campaign by the Chamber of Commerce to remind people to visit area shops for gift buying, especially with the holiday season around the corner. New London business owner Penny Morano explains how shoppers and local merchants will benefit. Hi, this is Penny Morano. I am the founder of the Destination New London program, and we just thought we'd explain it a little to you. Destination New London was founded in 2010 based on the foundations of the 350 Project. The 350 Project was find your three favorite local independent stores and spend $50 a month and help save your local economy. We brought in the founder of the 350 Project, Cinda Baxter, 
and decided to kind of run with it once we had her in and had 100 businesses available to learn about the project. So that Christmas, we founded the Destination New London Yellow Card. And the Yellow Card is based on shopping at any of the local businesses. Every time you spend $5, it is punched on your card in $5 increments. Once it reaches 50, again based on the 350 project, we enter you for prizes to win. We have 42 businesses this year um, that range from all the small local independent retailers as well as most of the hairdressers, the spas, as well as the restaurants in town. And every time, again, you spend any money, it does not cost you anything to join, we punch your card in the $5 increments. When you reach 50, you can win prizes that range from a $100 gift certificate that you can use at any of those businesses up to a $500 gift certificate the week of Christmas, as well as gift cards to all the local stores. Um, you can win a gift card to my store, for instance, Unleashed, as well as Clark's Hardware, or get a gift certificate to Millstone Restaurant. Dinner for two at In a Pleasant Lake is an availability. Anything you can think of, the businesses are throwing in. So we hope you spend your money locally, and we can't thank you enough for shopping in our town. Thanks. The holiday season also is the time when the need to help other citizens is important, especially regarding homelessness. Homelessness is on the rise in Vermont, a federal government study reports. About 25% more Vermonters this year than last year are homeless, notes a study by the U.S. Housing and Urban Development Department. Money to support homeless residents is key to finding homes for people who are living longer at shelters, reports Vermont Public Radio. Especially troubling to Vermont leaders, including Governor Peter Shumlin, is the rise in children who do not have a stable place to call home. Over 800 children lived in a shelter last year, an increase from 2012, says Department of Children and Families Commissioner Dave Iacovoni. When YCU News returns, we'll hear from Kearsarge Chronicle's Lynn Solomon, who spoke with Kate Naboli of the Library Arts Center. The YCU News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCU News. I'm Rose Billman. Now Matt McDonald will have a look at our weather for the next five days and he'll take a look at local college sports. Thanks Rose. Tomorrow we'll have a high of 37 degrees with lows in the teens. Sunday get ready for more snow with temperatures in the 20s and lows around 10 degrees. Monday should be snow free with a high of 28 and lows in the 20s. Tuesday we'll have highs in the 30s with lows around 25 but Wednesday will bring back the flurries with temperatures in the 30s and lows around 16 degrees. If you're looking to get out tomorrow afternoon, head over to the Grantham Town Hall between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. for their eighth annual holiday shopping event. Let's take a look at some big upcoming hockey games at our state colleges. At UNH, there's an upcoming women's hockey game with the Wildcats playing against Boston University. The game will take place at Boston's Ice Rink on Sunday, November 24th at 2 p.m. The UNH men's hockey team is playing against Harvard at Harvard on Tuesday, November 26th at 7 p.m. Now in Vermont, the UVM Catamounts men's hockey team is playing tonight at UMass Amherst at 7 p.m. They will play against UMass again on Sunday at the UVM rink at 4 p.m. Check out these exciting upcoming hockey games and cheer on your state college team. Thank you for joining us for this Friday edition of YCU News. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can watch our programs anytime online at www.ycunow.com. I'm Rose Spillman for YCU, your local view. Good night. <laughs>